So what's the difference in power between a pump gas tune and a race gas tune on your Turbo LS? In this video, we're gonna demonstrate the difference between a pump gas tune and a race gas tune. Now, if you run a pump gas tune, you might have to add fuel, but you'll definitely have to retard the timing. In this test, we varied the timing from a pump gas tune level of only 12 degrees all the way up to a race gas level tune of 20 degrees. So what was the power difference? Let's find out. To compare the power difference between a pump gas tune and a race gas tune, there are basically two ways to test this. The first is to use a knock sensor. You can run the pump gas tune all the way up until you get detonation. Then you run the race gas tune all the way up until you get detonation and compare the two. But that's not the way I ran this test. I don't like relying on a knock sensor to do the tuning. The tune needs to be right and the knock sensor needs to be there just in case. The way that I ran this test, I installed E85. Then we varied the timing from 20 degrees to 18 to 16 to 14 and finally down to 12 degrees. The reason I did this is I know 20 degrees is a good timing level for E85 with a turbo. I also understand that 12 degrees of timing is a reasonable amount for pump gas and it's safe. Now sure, you can get away with a little bit more power from the pump gas tune and a little bit more power from the race gas tune. But this test isn't about maximizing the power output. It's about showing the big difference between a pump gas tune and a race gas tune, and that's primarily timing. I also understand that as we lower the timing, you can also raise the boost, but we can do that both on the pump gas and the race gas. And again, this isn't about maximizing the power output. I wanted to test just one variable, and that's timing, because that's the big thing you change going from pump gas to race gas. Now that we understand the test procedure, let's take a look at our test motor. Now that we understand the test procedure, we can take a look at our test motor. The test motor was a 4.8 liter LR4. From a previous accident, we had to rebuild the bottom end. Now this Gen 3 motor was now sporting a factory block, a factory crank, but Gen 4 rods and forged JE pistons. We topped this thing with a set of factory 706 heads with a valve spring upgrade because we installed a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 2 turbo cam. I mean, we're gonna run a turbo, why not have a turbo cam? That thing was topped off with a factory truck intake, a manual throttle body, and a set of 80 pound Excel injectors. All this was controlled by a Holly HP management system, which is what we used to dial the timing back from 20 degrees to 12 degrees. Boost for our little 4.8 was supplied by a custom turbo kit. The turbo kit consisted of a pair of truck manifolds reversed, facing forward, and feeding a custom Y-pipe. The Y-pipe featured a pair of turbo smart wastegates and a three inch V-band flange. This allowed us to mount any turbo we wanted using our adapter tubes that adapt from the three inch V-band up to a T4 or a T6. In this case, for our test, we mounted a T6 S475 from Summit Racing. The S475 was capable of supporting over a thousand horsepower, so it had no problem with our little 4.8. Now boost from that S475 was fed through a Pro Charger air to water intercooler. The air to water intercooler was fed ambient dyno water, which is about 82 degrees. So we kept everything plenty cool and we only ran 10 pounds of boost. Speaking of boost, boost was controlled by our two turbo smart wastegates which were themselves controlled by a TC1 electronic wastegate controller. This allowed us to keep the boost right near 10 pounds for all the timing levels. And remember, all this testing was run on E85. Now that we've taken a look at our test motor, let's get to the results. Now let's take a look at the results. After we ran our 4.8 liter, 10 pounds of boost with 20 degrees of timing, little 4.8, it's got 639 horsepower. This is the power curve. I'm gonna show you these individually and then we'll go to the torque curve later on so you can take a look. So that's at 20 degrees of timing, 639 horsepower. After we drop the timing down to 18 degrees, here's what happened. And you can see down here, we didn't change the timing until after 4,000 RPM. So there'll be no change down here. After running at 18 degrees, the power output dropped to 613 horsepower. So from 639 to 613 with a change of two degrees. After that, 
drop the timing down to 16 degrees. Saw a big change there. All the way down to 580 horsepower. So from 639, 613, down to 580 at 16 degrees. Then we dropped it down to 14 degrees. So another big drop. Down to 548 horsepower at 14 degrees. Our final drop was down to 12 degrees of timing. Where we made 518 horsepower. So going from 20 degrees, we made 639, down to 12 degrees, which you'd run on pump gas, to 518. So we dropped 121 horsepower, dropping eight degrees of timing from 20 degrees down to 18 degrees. Now let's take a look at the torque peak. If we convert the horsepower curve over to a torque curve, Here's what we get. You see, there was no change here where we changed the timing. But if we take a look at the area where we changed the timing, which is near the torque peak, which we can see right up here. So at 20 degrees, we made 599 foot-pounds of torque, so right at 600 foot-pounds. After we changed the timing down to 12 degrees, that peak torque dropped down to 504 foot-pounds. So we, almost, we lost almost 100 foot-pounds of torque dropping the timing from 20 degrees down to 12 degrees. And you can see just like the horsepower curve, these are, these are all successive steps. So we went from 599 foot-pounds down to 579 foot-pounds at 18 degrees, down to 561 at 16 degrees, down to 541 at 14 degrees, and then finally down here near 500 foot-pounds at 12 degrees. And this, is be, this would be the area where you would change the timing at the torque peak, especially with pump gas. You would want to minimize the timing in this area because the cylinder pressure is going to be really high, and this is where you're going to get detonation. Actually, with pump gas, you could probably add some timing out here at the top because it'll tolerate it, but not here in this area. You want less timing here, and if you're able to run boost down here in this low, low RPM range, you'll also want less timing there. So this is the effect. We lost 121 horsepower and 100 foot-pounds of torque going from 20 degrees of timing down to 18 degrees of timing. Now let's take a look at what happened to the air-fuel ratio, because all we did was change timing and we made no adjustment to the air-fuel ratio. So we look at the air-fuel ratio. This is our air-fuel ratio at 20 degrees of timing. With this variation, there's only three-tenths of an air-fuel point. It might look like it on this scale, but it's actually not very much. So that's 20 degrees. Here's 18 degrees. Here's 16 degrees. Here's 14 degrees. And here's 12 degrees. As you can see, the variation between the different runs, and we made no adjustment to the, to the air fuel curve. The variation between air fuel is like a tenth of an air fuel point, meaning nothing, because there would be that much of a change if we just ran two tests back to back at the same timing level. So the question is, we changed the power output by 121 horsepower and 100 foot-pounds of torque. So why didn't the air fuel ratio change? Even though the timing changed and the power changed, why didn't the air fuel ratio change? I want you guys to let me know in the comments what you think, especially all the tuner guys that are gonna tell you, no, if you change the timing, you have to change the air fuel ratio. Nothing changed on the air fuel from this big of a change in timing and this big of a change in power. So why didn't it change? Let me know in the comments and I'll answer in just a sec. Before I tell you why the air fuel ratio didn't change, despite the fact that we had a dramatic change in power and timing, let's take a look at the boost curve. So some of you might be thinking, well, there's a big change in power because there's a big change in boost. Take a look at, this is 20 degrees, this is 18 degrees, this is 16 degrees, 14, and finally 12. Our boost curves were the same for all of the runs. You see this, these uh, big spikes down here, here, and here. 
that's just the dyno reading it. That's just the sample rate for the dyno. The boost curve was exactly the same. There was no change in power there, so there's no change in boost. You can see the boost curve was the same for all the runs. The electronic wastegate controller kept that in check and made sure our boost was consistent for all the runs. You're seeing a variation here of, a, you know, a tenth or two tenths of a pound again, which would be the difference in the variations run to run. So it's not boost that's changing the power, it was definitely timing. So now we're going to talk about why the air fuel didn't change, despite the fact that we had such a big change in timing and a big change in power. So why didn't the air fuel ratio change? Despite the fact that we made an extra 121 horsepower and changed the timing by 8 degrees, why was the air fuel ratio exactly the same? Well, you need to stop thinking about how much fuel we burned, and you need to think about when we burned it. You see, we burned all that fuel. It just didn't happen at the right time. Because we retarded the timing, the piston was farther down in the cylinder. We burned all the fuel, the expansion took place, it just took place in a bigger volume. So it had less energy pushing the piston down. It all burned and it was all there. The piston was just too far away to take advantage of the expansion. That's why the power wasn't there. And that's why the air fuel ratio didn't change. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned there's a big difference between a pump gas tune and a race gas tune. We picked up 121 horsepower by moving the timing 8 degrees, from 12 degrees up to 20 degrees. Not only that, we also learned that the air fuel ratio didn't change. Despite the fact that we had a big change in power and a big change in timing, there was no change in air fuel. That we burned that fuel, we just did it at the wrong time. Guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, but most importantly, make sure to comment. Let me know what you think I did right, what you think I did wrong, and what I can do to improve the next videos. Thanks for watching.